Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh In this video I will discuss uh, five uh, multiple choice questions uh, uh, about diuretic uh, therapy The first question The nurse is teaching a group of patients with cardiac conditions who are taking diuretic therapy The nurse explains that individuals prescribed furosemide lasix shot First option, avoid consuming large amounts of cabbage, cauliflower, and kale. Second option, rise slowly from sitting or lying positions. Third option, count their pulse for one full minute before taking the medication. And finally, restrict fluid intake to no more than 1000 ml in 24 hour period. The correct answer is option number two. Uh, to clear this, as a diuretic furosemide may dramatically reduce the patient's circulating blood volume, thus producing episodes of orthostatic hypertension. Patients may minimize this effect by rising slowly from sitting or lying positions. While options 1, 3, and 4 are incorrect, cabbage, cauliflower, and kale are high in vitamin K, but furosemide does not require restricted consumption of these foods. Monitoring pulse rate during administration of furosemide for reflex tachycardia secondary to hypertension is advised, but it is not required that it be taken before the dose or for one full minute. Due to the potential of significant diuresis, floods should not be restricted unless ordered by the healthcare provider. Second question. The patient who is receiving pumetanide, pumex, is instructed to watch for symptoms associated with electrolyte imbalances which condition would the patient most likely experience? The first option is hypernatremia. Second option, hypokalemia. Third option is hyperkalemia. And the last option is hypocalcemia. The correct answer is two, hypokalemia. Loop diuretics such as bumetanide cause a significant loss of potassium. Hypokalemia is often the most predominant electrolyte imbalance. While option 1, 3, and 4 are incorrect, hypernatremia is unlikely with the administration of bumetanide because it promotes sodium loss. Hyperkalemia is inconsistent with the administration of a mumetanide due to the increase in potassium excretion. If elevated potassium levels are present in these patients, other etiologies should be investigated. Pumetanide does not cause hypocalcemia, but may cause hypercalciuria with an increased risk of calcium-based kidney stones. Third question, while preparing a patient for discharge, which of the following statements should the nurse include in the instructions regarding the patient's new prescription of hydrochlorothiazide microzyte? The first statement, there's no limitations on the amount of salt and fluid intake. Second option, Ingest vitamin K rich food daily, such as green leafy vegetables and broccoli. Third option report muscle cramps or weakness to the healthcare provider. And finally, antihypertensive drugs taken concurrently may produce sleepness. The correct answer is number three. Option three. Muscle cramps and weakness may indicate hypokalemia and should be reported to the healthcare provider. While option 1, 2, and 4 are incorrect, 
Many patients taking diuretic therapy are instructed to monitor the intake of both sodium and water to maintain adequate but not excessive amounts. Patients should ingest food high in potassium, not vitamin K. Thiazide, diuretics, and antihypertensive drugs are not known to cause sleepness when taken together. Fourth question, patients prescribed spironolactone, aldactone, are often at risk of electrolyte imbalance. The nurse assesses for this adverse effect because this drug may cause the body to retain, retain potassium, release magnesium, excrete potassium, and finally bind calcium. The correct answer is number one. Spironolactone is a potassium sparing diuretic and may cause hyperkalemia, so it retains potassium. While option two, three, and four are incorrect, this drug does not have a direct effect on magnesium and does not cause hypokalemia. It does not have calcium binding effects. The fifth question, which nursing measures should be a nursing priority for the patient when first beginning Minitor? Is withdrawal. The first option, keep, keep the urinary or bed pan available for patients with limited mobility, or assess for hypokalemia and encourage food high in potassium, or Minitor intake and output ratio and why the patient daily and last, monitor blood pressure and assess for level of consciousness. The best answer is number four. In the early stages of administration of many tall fluid is drawn into extracellular spaces and vascular compartments. Pulmonary and peripheral edema may occur, and increased intracranial pressure may also occur along with an early change in the level of consciousness. While option one, two, three, and three are incorrect, keeping a urinary or bed pan nearby, monitoring electrolytes, including potassium, and recording input and output and daily weight are important nursing interventions, but are not the main in nursing priority in the early administration of many. Please here comment your answer for this question. The nurse is monitoring a patient receiving acetazolamide, Diamox, which acid base imbalance is a potential risk. Which acid base balance is a potential risk for this patient? The first option metabolic acidosis, metabolic alkalosis, or respiratory acidosis, or respiratory alkalosis. Please Comment your answer and thanks for watching. You can subscribe this channel to get new notifications for the new videos, which is very helpful in uh, preparing for exams. Thank you very much.